And uh, hello to everyone. A very warm welcome to this webinar, Building a Futuristic Career in Law, organized by BML Munjal University. Thank you for joining in. Once again, a warm welcome to all of you. The topic that we are covering today is quite poignant, uh, given the times we are living in. I think uh, there is no denying today that we are living in uncertain times. Now that the board exams are canceled, most of you must be worried about your future prospects. Which subject of specialization to opt for? Should I pursue law? Which law school to go for? What are the future opportunities if we pursue law? I'm interested, suppose, in human rights and conflicted whether to go for a BA specialized course or go for a law degree. Well, I would say sit tight and we are here to provide you some of these questions for you. Uh, I think had it not been for the pandemic, most of you would have had the opportunity to physically go to your desired law schools, meet counselors, faculty members to get a clear picture. But no worries if that's not possible. We have tried bringing in the experts on the table to answer your doubts and queries. Today, we are absolutely elated to be in conversation with two exemplary young lawyers who have walked the same path of finding a law school, fought with various odds and difficulties, and now well established in their respective fields. They will share their experiences and journey, and uh, I'm sure we can uh, learn from that, and it will be an enriching experience. I welcome and thank uh, both Ms. Nimra Samin Alvi and Ms. Vidhi Tukral for uh, joining us today. Uh, I'll just do brief introductions for both of them. Uh, Ms. Nimra Samin Alvi is a senior associate with Shardul Amarchand Mangaldas. In the dispute resolution practice, Ms. Alvi holds a bachelor's in engineering and a short experience working as a software developer with an IT company. Thereafter, she decided to switch her field and pursued the three-year law degree from the Jindal Global Law School, Sonipat. After passing her law school, she has been working with the firm primarily in the space of commercial disputes, arbitration, and white-collar crimes. One of her key areas of interest is in developing technological innovations for enhancing alternative dispute resolution practices. And Ms. Vidhi Tukral holds a master's of law degree with specialization in environmental law, energy and climate change. She's currently working in the Center for Environmental Law, WWF India as a senior program coordinator. Prior to this, she worked in the impact assessment division of the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, where she handled cases relating to non-coal mining. Thank you uh, both Nimra and Vidhi for joining us today. Uh, now, let me introduce um, you to all our student discuss discussants, Mr. Harshit Manmani and Mr. Karthik Pathak, both of them on their way to third year of law school at BML Munjal. Uh, before we go ahead, let me explain how we will be going about this webinar. Uh, both Harshit and Karthik, they have curated a number of questions for uh, Ms. Nimra and Ms. Vidhi. And we are going to discuss those questions for about 45 minutes. And after that, we will take questions from the audience. So uh, over to you, I think, uh, Harshit and Karthik. Thank you, ma'am. First, first of all, before starting, uh, starting with the questions, I would like to thank both our esteemed guests for taking out some time from their uh, hectic schedule in, on, on this Saturday morning. I know it's uh, we in this pandemic period we all uh, we all uh, find it difficult to manage our schedule. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, so the first question that I have uh, is uh, is the first question that I uh, that I had in my mind when I uh, came to uh, came to this law school. I was thinking whether I took uh, took the right decision to choose law or not. When uh, so it is interesting that you both chose uh, different careers before you actually pursued law. Uh, Nimra, ma'am, you pursued engineering and uh, Vidhi, ma'am, you pursued CS before actually turning to law. So uh, was this uh, actually planned by you or was there any turn uh, in your uh, thought process? Do you want to go first? Uh, Vidhi, 
Ja, Wahnsinn, das nimmt man. Ein Wort macht man. Okay. Am I going first? All right. So, um, uh, it was nothing planned. Actually, I went through a very wonderful period of cluelessness uh, where I had no idea where, what I wanted to do. And uh, uh, I was didn't have a lot of people to guide me when I was in 12th. And so, you know, you end up resorting to default career options, which is the safest choice. So at, uh, in 10th, I felt, okay, math science would be an ideal choice. I opted for that. After that, I felt, okay, engineering is the safest choice. I opted for that. But uh, eventually, uh, when I got into the field of engineering and I started working, it's uh, then that I realized that, you know, this is probably, this is not the field for me. It was through a process of elimination where I understood what I don't like rather than understanding what I do like. And uh, while I was working at uh, the IT company, uh, I realized that uh, I may not know what I want to do, but I do have a sense of the environment that I want around me when I work. So I wanted to do something empowering, which, uh, you know, gives me sufficient resources to do whatever I want to do. And uh, law at that point, after I quit my job and took a break, I think for three, four months, law at that point seemed to fit into that uh, description. And therefore, uh, I went to law. Right. I think uh, I have a similar story like Nimda. So uh, after 12th, uh, I knew that I'm not good at maths and uh, a bit of accountancy is what something I could bear. So um, I, I took up my, you know, uh, BCom honors course from Delhi University and alongside I did CS. So, um, I did, and I used, I enjoyed uh, studying both the courses. I, uh, when in fact I completed my CS and I get on, you know, started working on it. I uh, was, uh, you know, it, it, I won't say that it, uh, you know, it was a bad choice because it's through, you know, my, uh, my study involved in these courses that I realized that, you know, where I feel most comfortable with and what is it that, uh, you know, like, the, like, like when I was working as a CS uh, in a in life insurance company, I realized probably this is one thing which I might not be able to sustain for a long term. So I started to think of something, you know, which will complement my skills and I can take it on for a long term, you know, joyfully. That's where I thought of, uh, you know, thinking of which course to do then. Uh, I even thought of MBA. So I was confused between MBA and law. And then uh, because CS has a lot of uh, elements of corporate law, securities law. And I realized that law is something that I, I don't hate. Uh, so then uh, that's how I, I got into, you know, three years LLB from General Global Law University. There, uh, you know, so, so reading documents, interpreting, uh, that's something, you know, law and policies that I realized later on is, is, is most like I'm comfortable with it. And uh, it's not that, you know, when I go to office, I, I uh, you know, I don't enjoy doing my work. So that's where I think, you know, my whole process, I would say, uh, you know, uh, just like it's, it's through the on-job experience that I realize that what is it. So to, I, I, I would say that, you know, there are times when you have to work towards your dream job. And that's how it happened with me, where, you know, you get onto something, you realize, okay, this is working out for you. Maybe, you know, adding onto something else in terms of a qualification or a work experience. And then eventually, uh, you know, there I am, where I'm fully satisfied with the, uh, the job, you know, the work that I'm doing right now. So that's how it happened with me. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your answers. So my next answer question is that, so ma'am, we all know that you both pursued different careers in the start. So I mean, from the current standpoint of your career, so do you think that you made the right choice of switching to law? And ma'am, and ma'am, so do you think that your early career options have helped you in your law career? And did you have an advantage from your previous law career in the scenario that like you had pursued the three-year law degree and not the five-year law degree? So did you have any advantage in that? Uh, so, uh, yes, I mean, I certainly believe I made the right choice. 
had i not i would have been working in some it company and i'd get up every day and switch on my computer and write some repetitive codes and come back without much application of my uh, in terms of your work and in the sense that law also gives you the ability to you know critically look at the world around you also so i think i'm a, i would i'm a less boring person than would, what i would have been had i taken uh, continued my progression in engineering so certainly i feel i made the right choice in terms of uh, comparison between three year course and five year course uh, each has its advantages and disadvantages uh, there are a number of times during my practice where i feel that my engineering degree has really helped me out uh, more than five year uh, llb courses uh, students uh, when uh, placed in a similar situation so uh, particularly i'll tell you in commercial mat matters uh, where there is uh, some form of uh, complex calculations or in a service agreement dispute where you need to understand the life cycle of software development and things like that or even in taxation excise matters uh, having a maths background does i won't say teaches you how to go about it but any course uh, whatever you take it develops a sense of thinking in you a method of thinking more than teaching you what the subject is so if you come from a certain background say engineering you do develop that automatic uh, analytical thinking about breaking things into you know equations uh, even when reading a judgment so that uh, automatic method of thinking and analyzing and processing information is always there and it's backed by whatever degrees or studies that you've had before law so that certainly helps uh five year course on the other hand i would say is advantages uh, in terms of uh the time that it offers a student to stay in law school and experience and explore it properly and also i think social sciences uh the combination course really enables one to you know get a sense of history political science and uh similar subjects especially if you want to venture into uh fields such as human rights it can be really helpful for certain fields if you take a five year course uh, it becomes more holistic and actually I, to me i think it gives you more time to you know stabilize yourself in the law school and assess your options better uh vidhi what do you think about it did it help you your uh, cs degree Yes, it did because you know, as a as a company secretary, so I was working as an assistant company secretary at that point of time. It's where uh, board meetings happen every uh, once in every quarter. So you compile, you know, you you compile the board agenda, you circulate it, you draft the minutes, you uh, you know, you learn how to uh, you know communicate with the board of directors. You know, you ca you also have to. Uh, coordinate and lies with the regulatory bodies be it ministry of corporate affairs or for me also it was irda so uh, all of this helped me of course uh, you know later on also so uh, because i don't think my my uh, career uh, was that major shift it was mainly from you know towards from corporate law to a uh, company secretarial law practice towards environmental law so so the base i felt was same in terms of of course we did with a lot of documentation and you know like to deal with the government bodies so all that helped me just that the content was different now it was not about shareholders meeting or you know like agm and everything else not about not talking about board resolution it all changed into you know what we're doing like maybe you know dealing with ministry of environment forest and climate change or ministry of tribal affairs which are whichever is the relevant ministry depending on the work or uh, say central zoo authority so all of these regulatory bodies then became a uh, part of my uh, you know working space uh secondly if you know if i just uh, i have actually never compared in terms of you know five years three years it really depends on uh, you know if you're somebody who's sure you know because there are a lot of people who uh, who have that clarity in terms of uh, you know if they want to go for five years you do end up saving one year and you i mean the two years do offer you uh, a social science background or a commerce background say if you choose bba llp so that gives you that foundation and uh, the best thing is that you know in five years uh you uh, you pretty much figure out how a law school works your research skills can be better because 
you know, when I did uh, BCom honors, there was nothing, you know, there was no research involved. There was absolutely nothing. So, so uh, if you are in, you know, probably a BA, LLB or BBA, LLB, you know that, you know, after two years, it, this is what lies ahead. So maybe, in, you know, the first two years, you kind of train your mind that, you know, I, I, these are the subjects that I would be studying. Uh, it, it, I feel it really doesn't mat matter if it's a three years or a five years program. Uh, it is just that, you know, people uh, who don't choose to do five years because, you know, after 12, uh, if you have, if you, you know, want to explore, I feel your, you know, your interest do, uh, does evolve, evolve. So at that point of time, if you feel that, you know, you want a basic graduation degree, one should do that instead of just doing a specialization, which is a five years, maybe because after five years, you may feel that you don't want to do law. So then, you know, having a three years degree is much better because you've spent three years and then you figure out what to do next. Probably then you can have a specialization. Uh, so that's how it was with me, because I was not ready to plunge into a five years course because I wasn't sure if law was for me or not. And five years seemed a lot uh, so for me, I wanted to have a basic thing and I also wanted to know, you know, I, for me, so like, you know, to have a commerce background, I've always enjoyed studying commerce. So, uh, studying BCom honors, enjoying DU life is what I really liked, uh, at that point of time. And, uh, uh, and then three years law, I think is mainly, you know, when you have, you have explored, you have done your graduation, you know, what all career options exist. You, uh, also interact with your, you know, peers in these three years, uh, that's where you, you know, you get to know a lot that, uh, you know, that, that you want to do. And when you enroll for three years, there's a lot of more, there's more focus. I felt at least in my case, if I speak of my life, what, you know, like, so immediately after 12th, I wasn't sure of law, but after, you know, I did my CAs and I worked for a couple of years, I realized that, yes, I actually want to complement my, you know, my degrees with a uh, law degree so that, you know, I can, I can continue doing the work, but, you know, then I have a, specialization in the legal field so three years llb is i feel you'll find a lot of focused lot there you know so usually the batches are small there are few universities offering three years llb uh, but uh, you know so th three years class three years llb classes will be you know small bunch of people but very focused because they know when that they're here for a law it's not they're not disoriented lot i feel so they're very much sure that this is what they want to pursue ahead so basically you're saying that, you know, the three year program is for those students who are absolutely sure that, okay, this is what I want to do. And uh, then they do not have the, you know, leisure of time, right? They do not have the comfort of time, but in a BA uh, five year program, they have that time to explore all the opportunities. They have so many electives to opt for. So uh, yeah, so anyone who is interested and who is only sure, so they can go for the three uh, year course. Uh, okay, uh, any uh, the further questions that you might yes, absolutely, Karthik. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm reaching my third year uh, in my law school, and I'm still unsure what uh, what field to pursue in uh, in law. Law field is very vast. So my um, next question to you is whether it is possible for a student to decide what field uh, he he wants to pursue from the very start of the law school, because we get uh, we get introduced with many subjects as and when we reach the next year of the law school. And uh, will your answer uh, change if the uh, course we are talking about is three year course? Um, so, yes, the answer differs for a three year and a five year course for the same reason that Priti mentioned. Uh, more importantly, uh, in a five year course, I think the structure of the course is such that you are not introduced to a lot of law subjects in your first year. So, I mean, if you're just taught, say, torts, you can't pick that as a specialization and go ahead without studying the other major subjects. And so first year, obviously, in a five-year law school, you can't. In a three-year course, perhaps, yes, you can. Uh, not because of the... So you are broadly introduced to, I think, all the areas in the first year of law school. It's much more hectic. You do have a sense uh, till then. Uh, but more so because you are sure of how your personality is and which sector would be suitable in terms of age and life experience rather than just, you know, the difference in courses. Um, having said that, uh, the question is not whether you can, the question is whether you should. 
uh, you know, pick up your specialization in your first year or second year. I think you should not pick a specialization even if in your, uh, say, fifth year of law school. Uh, for the same reason that uh, uh, your interests are evolving, the things that you are introduced to uh, will uh, keep changing, in, not just in law school, but even in your career. And that is why I think law firms also, you know, offer a, a rotation policy because when you go out of law school, you broadly have a sense, all right, I want to practice. I don't know whether I want to do for, go for corporate or litigation. So law firms do offer that rotation where six months you uh, work in corporate practice and six months in litigation and then make a decision. Similarly, there are other fields which you can explore and that is why you have internships. Uh, the idea of a law, law school uh, particularly a five-year course to me is not to pick your specialization. People sometimes do LLM and then change their specialization. It's uh, about exploring as much as you can, getting a sense of what your interests are, keep engaging with your interests, and you will see that automatically your CV will build to show what you want to do rather than you asking what, what do I want to do. And so when you reach that stage, you then can you know comfortably explore that post law school and uh, specialization uh, it keeps changing you can't really pick a particular area i have been practicing for five years uh once and i'm in disputes once even i've when i've got into disputes my specialization is still evolving there is always this super specialization in any specialization so uh you shouldn't as a student think about so rigidly about what you want to do and when you want to decide it it will i think automatically come to you if you just explore all your options right i think i just you know probably add on to uh Nimra. she has uh, put it very well it's basically i feel even if you're doing three years or five years law there is uh, I also don't really understand the fixation of having a specialization. You know, you can, the idea when you're studying law is to first know what is law, you know, what is the art and craft of law, you know, so probably to understand uh, the legal methods, uh, the legal interpretation. If you have learned that, you can uh, do any field of law, you know, so it's, it's, it's like, you know, if you know how to read, you can uh, read a primary textbook, you can read a secondary a school textbook or you can even read a you know graduate or postgraduate textbook once you know the basic skill so once you know what uh, legal interpretation is what is legal writing what is analysis uh, you know how to understand a document how to interpret a particular clause uh, that's all that's all you need to do so i think in like probably in the law school i think one should just explore out every subject that comes your way uh, take that take every subject with an open mind you might develop certain liking or disliking for a particular course, depending on the professor or the kind of assignments that you get to do. But uh, I think each course, uh, you know, wh whichever subject you get should be taken with an open mind. And once you start to work, then also you don't have to actually obsess over specialization. You can still work because I think, you know, you can probably feel in litigation, you get to do so many matters that through your work, you will figure out that, okay, these are the matters which probably I've enjoyed more, you know, than this. And that's how you understand what's your area. And it is not that, you know, you have to have to specialize. If specialization is one thing which comes naturally to you, you feel gravitated towards a particular theme or an area of law, good. If not, then of course, you know, it's it's good to be a, a general expert also. And it's not that, not that, you know, say if I am working into environmental law that I dislike other areas of law. I, I do have, you know, other areas of law, which I also still like. It is just that I, I chose to work in this and I cannot, you know, say if I like gender law also, I just that, you know, my probably my job will not, you know, like I, I, so I don't think I'll be able to balance both. So I, I also like other areas of life. I also like family law. It is just so that, you know, I, I opted for environmental law to be at the number one uh, preference list for me. But uh, it, it's not that, you know, you start, uh, you don't like other areas of right? Just so you have to pick up one, you pick up one and you start to work on it. But uh, I don't think there's anything that, as a law student, you should worry about specialization. This should be your last concern. Uh, it's, it shouldn't be a, a matter of worry at all, because I think each subject, if you know what each subject offers you, if your base, your foundation is good enough, uh, your journey after law school would be, uh, would be smooth. 
So thank you, ma'am, for sharing your insights. I'm sure like the law experience that are available must have cleared some of their doubts. So I'm so my follow up question will be like that. We all know that passion is important in any work we do. So ma'am, uh, even though we are passion, we are passionate about something. We get influenced by certain people and certain things. Like for my me, my personal experience was that I was influenced by many people in thinking that other corporate law or other field is better than something I like. Ma'am, what is your opinion on how like uh, what will be your advice to us? Like how not to get influenced by others and follow what we are passionate about? As there are some law aspirants among us who are looking to pursue law, so they may be thinking to get into law field. by due to their friends or something so what are your ideas to them uh, so i mean uh, i think we use the passion word very lightly if you are passionate about something i don't think you will be influenced by anything or anyone uh, what probably you mean to say is that you have uh, a certain inclination or interest towards uh, a certain area of law at the time of practice and you feel a sudden rush of you know everybody rushing to law firms or uh, you know individual practitioners starting their own practice after law school or joining senior councils and you sometimes tend to get caught up in that wave because since everybody is doing it it seems to be a safer option uh or you know it can be uh, prospects of a higher salary or things like that so i think it it it's more of a life question than a question it's specific to legal space uh nevertheless i mean i'll attempt to answer it uh so see uh, uh whatever decisions we are making it is not just based on our interest uh we are a product of our circumstances uh if uh, you do have an interest say in human rights but you get a, a job at a good law firm in commercial practice and you need have a student debt to clear or a family to support obviously you will be influenced by that choice and rightly so um so but it doesn't mean that you have to give up what you like you can always put your interests in the back burner and keep that uh, vision ahead and whenever you get a chance to get back to it uh, in terms of uh, being influenced by your peers uh, uh like i said 5 years is a time for you to explore and not to really decide if your peers are going for something it is not necessary that it's something uh, bad for you or wrong for you it's just that you need to see uh, you need to you know look ahead and imagine yourself in that space and assess whether your personality is suitable to that space whether it's you know working in a law firm uh, or in a more formal space or it's you know running around in courts and being a litigator so uh, and that doesn't so it Uh, so if you feel at any point of time that you are getting caught up in that rush of getting into one particular area of practice or a particular job profile uh it's always good to explore what that profile entails uh this again you do through mooting uh you do through internships and more importantly i think uh you should speak to a lot of people before making that choice it can be your professors it can be your uh, seniors it can be uh, you know any friends colleagues to assess how the real world is out there before you make a committed decision uh, in any case uh, you shouldn't really burden yourself with this because it's not like you are making some ultimate choice uh, you will make a choice and then you will change it 2 uh, years 3 years 10 years down the line the law uh, out of all things is being adaptive to situations you can't really say that okay i will be a litigator and you you are just stuck to it all your life you need to keep thinking and evaluating yourself evaluating how the practice is evol- evolving and make those decisions so i mean it's okay I, the sense of law school should be just to explore to me bottom line is that yes uh i think also yeah with uh, you please continue yeah yes i feel also uh you know if you think of if say even after law school uh, it really depends you know uh, what are the factors for uh, you know that one derives the most satisfaction when you start to work uh, 
you know so you know so to think of high salary is not wrong it's not a you know it's not a sin so if if that's something which motivates you if that's something which keeps you going if that's something which helps you to sustain your job it's good enough you know so it i think it it it's just different for everyone uh maybe for somebody it could be a good working environment it, maybe for somebody it could be you know like not working for long number of hours it could be maybe you know just researching probably not arguing so you know when you get to work or maybe like teaching so it depends where uh you know you want to work at but uh, so there 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 are various factors so even if you are getting influenced by something uh which means that you haven't actually made up your mind totally so if you are getting swayed by you know your peers or you know what you see or what you look around which is okay which is actually very human to get influenced there is no harm in getting influenced but you know maybe if even after getting influenced you take a decision on the basis of it and you're not satisfied then do your research work on it then then you take actions accordingly which will lead you to a place where you know that you know where i am it's you know we do we it's not the idea is not to get fixated in one place uh so it's uh, so to get influence is not bad but to what extent you know it's not that you know everything that i read or everything you know every comment around me uh, would sway me that's not the idea but uh, to be open to what others are doing to be open to what others are saying about it and you still know you know then you assess your own situation and your work profile is it still you know satisfying you or not but uh, in the law school i feel uh, you know working on uh, you have you know five years uh, where uh, or even three years to explore what all career options you can have by way of internships or you know so you you figure out a lot in that one month i i know it's a very you know short span of time but then you do get a sense of it you know like you just get like probably like a minuscule sense of it but you do get to know that you know this was it and maybe this is the this is the environment that i would want to work on or uh, this is the kind of work i want or this is you know the kind of boss that i would uh, you know want to become so you have you know those aspirations when you are in law school so i think it's all okay and you know probably somebody you know like an hr director of my first company told me that there are two ways to follow your passion one is that you make your passion your job uh and you you know you you work on it say you know say if i if i like environmental law i make i work in environmental law and i work so my job and my passion everything is same and i'm working on it totally uh second is that i can work on something else so i can even work on corporate law or i can even do arbitration but i can still pursue my passion i can still contribute to environment right uh, it's not that if you know uh, i can't do uh, anything for the cause of environment for you know for saving it or for any other cause that i really feel for if i'm not working in it uh, so now it it depends on what kind of person you are if you are somebody who's okay to you know have two different things where you can have a different job and your passion and work for it you know you will still derive satisfaction out of it uh, for few it's like you know you want to have both things merged together you want to have your job and passion as one and you want to work towards it totally you know so that that's totally your uh, way your your outlook towards life that how you want to work but it is i don't think it's it's necessary to uh, make your passion uh, your job you can still pursue your passion if it's not your job you know there are ways of it depending on you know you know how you work towards it but uh, there's no stopping to you know no one can stop you if you have a particular interest area or a passion you can definitely work for it work for it so if you know if your priorities are uh, to earn at that point of time and your passion is not uh, probably the right uh, you know probably the right situation at that point of time to support you earn that much then i think whatever the situation demands you know you work for it and you can still continue to you know pursue your passion you you i mean there are ways of it there are i feel infinite opportunities helping you out to pursue your passion so it it's not necessary to merge both and uh, if you're somebody who wants to merge both then good you can merge both and also do it but there are two things you know so uh, i mean you can keep it in separate classifications Okay. Uh thank you Vidhi and Nimra. Any other questions Harshit and Karthik? Yes, ma'am. My next question is to Vidhi ma'am. Ma'am I uh, remember uh, once my professor was telling me that uh, 
uh, i don't know why students are you know uh, so much fond of corporate law and litigation law these are the two fields that they know about he told me that the environment law is one of the most emerging fields in law and uh, uh, he told me, he told us that uh, we should we should not you know feel uh, feel that only corporate law or or, or the uh, handful of fields that uh, students generally choose so uh, you pursued environmental law you have the experience of that particular field can you give us insight uh, insight about it uh, yes so environment law was not always taught in law schools you know this is also coming from uh, you know judicial pronouncement of mc mehta versus union of india where it was said that environmental law should be taught in all the law school and that's where it is now mandatory for all the lawyers you know for all the law students to study environmental law be it 3 years course or be it 5 years course and that is where we are we are exposed to what environmental law is uh environment law again like i said it's it's not uh just you know like a straight jacket uh, uh, formula to you know pursue your interest it is at the intersection of a lot of other subjects it has a lot of science behind it if you're working on a mining matter uh you i mean it it's i mean of course it has environmental uh, impacts but if once if you don't know the science behind it so you have to interact with scientists you know people who are you know working at the mines to know what uh, uh, how do they work to understand the law of mining then then only you can understand what is mines and minerals development act if you have spoken to them so uh, and be it even a wildlife act you know like a provision so to know you know what is it probably you have to speak to a veterinary probably you have to speak to a, a you know a forest officer what goes behind the scene so environment law works at the intersection of various other laws if it's air pollution you uh, you know you have to have a science uh, not a science behind it if it's forest laws again you know to know the biology behind it uh, it's uh, even if if you talk about climate change uh, there's a there's a whole science behind climate change so it is not that you know if i say you know it's environment law i i'm not looking at other areas uh, which are not even law there are different disciplines so uh, that's where uh, like for me i find this very interesting because it is at the intersection of so many other things that uh, i like to explore you know it's not simply a, you know if i'm working on a wildlife field if you know what is a probably a conviction rate in particular wildlife conviction rate in a particular state uh, it there goes a lot in terms of you know what what are the people who are the people are there any other tribes you know how evolved are they are they falling under you know uh, you know probably which act uh, what kind of forest uh, do they have around them what is the main source of livelihood and then probably you can get into your question which you are finding answer to so uh, environment law uh, for me is something that came very easily i could understand i could understand uh, uh, what the uh, air water act says i could clearly understand uh, you know for me it just came very easily to understand it because it's actually simple uh, it's where you need to uh, you know like couple it with other disciplines or areas of law so it's not tough at all in my mind law it is just that you have to have a curious mind to know what is happening around you and then you can find answers to it so in my mind law uh, i think you know so i interned in wwf when i was in my law school when we studied environmental law and uh, when i was interning i just uh, felt that this is something that i want to explore and that you know that got me here where i am but uh, it it's about my interest in that like i had i just was very curious to know how you know forest act conservation forest conservation act working is how uh, you know how are the scheduled tribes uh, are placed in our uh, you know uh, where they are you know how are the laws protecting them so yeah so that was my experience on in my mind law thank you ma'am for sharing some insights on environmental law i'm sure it will be helpful for the law aspirants Now, my question is a direct one. As so, ma'am, we all know like the law aspirants are present among us. Ma'am, the question is that the Indian higher education system placements play a prominent role in influencing the choice of the choice of prospective students and their parents. Ma'am, but according to you, what are the factors should be kept in mind by the law aspirants while choosing a law school? so and ma'am do you think that the interest of a prospective sh- student should be factored in while making a choice uh, so uh, 
choosing a law school i'd say three things one you need to look at uh, its pool of faculty i think faculty is something which makes or break a school or any school so you need to uh, look at the resource pool that the intellectual resource pool that the law school has uh, the second would be uh, student engagements uh, to assess how interested a university is in its students and uh, what kind of initiatives is the university taking for the students it can be you know in cultural space it can be Uh, legal cell placement cell for arranging internships it can be mous with universities for semester exchange or anything of that sort which gives you a sense that you know the law school really cares of its students and cares of exposing its students to a variety of uh, arenas uh, the third i think would be to identify uh, where you will thrive in uh and it's uh, more of a question of uh, uh, the last point is that you mentioned your personality so any school over a period of time would uh, build an essence around it uh, uh, for instance uh, you want to go to jnu because you want to be able to think critically you have that sense of ideas of liberty and critical thinking and you think this is the right place for me because that's the vibe that that university gives me so similarly every law school will will have things associated with it some may promote uh, you know extra curriculars like mooting debating a lot uh, some may uh, you know promote academic achievements and uh, it can be a variety or a combination of all and even in terms of the culture that the university you know uh, has so uh, i think these and you need to then see i mean it it may be a better law school in terms of you know academic success but it may not be suitable for you because say if you are uh, uh, a classical dancer and you put in a university which has no program for that and you have to spend 5 years it will be very suffocating for you so uh, to also identify where you would thrive it does not have uh can I, everyone hear nimra i uh, i can't so uh, all right we'll wait for nimra but uh, vidhi if you can continue with the same question and then uh, we will move on to the audience questions chao sure. uh, i think i'll just add on to what nimra was saying so once you decide on the law school i feel uh, you know it's not i mean at that point of time when you're deciding on the law school it seems to be the you know the the challenge of course is to find out all this and that can only be done Okay, I think her voice is lagging. I'll probably let her. Hi, Nimra. Yes, we lost you for a couple of seconds. Probably if you can repeat what you said in the last few seconds. Yeah, yeah. Just Nimra, uh, be very quick in your response, and then we will uh, hear with you. Yeah. You have to unmute yourself. i think it's identifying the faculty it's identifying what the university offers for its students in terms of engagement and identifying a space where you thrive in and for that you it would be helpful for you if you talk to the students or alumni of that particular university that's it yes i think you know once you do all that it's it's then also even if you're in the best law school it still depends a lot on your caliber on you know how much you are willing to take uh, the teachings ahead Uh, so i think it, it by at the end of the day it's all about uh, your uh, your uh, you know your move your your determination to take your career ahead so uh, even if you are not in the the law school that you wanted to i don't think it's it's you know you have to be very disheartened because uh, you know eventually things happen once you're out of law school it's mainly on the job learning law is mainly about what you learn on the you know on the job it's like you can you know you can probably top in your law school but when you come and work it's a different world altogether so uh, be open to challenges you know the idea is that even if you know you're not able to perform well how do you perform under pressure you know how do you react to a situation which didn't go in your favor so all these factors i think you learn on the job so even if you're not in the right school uh, law law school that you wanted to get into it's absolutely okay because it is mainly your experience when you get to work that will take you ahead 
Um, great. Uh, thank you, Vidhi and Nimra, once again. Uh, Harshit and Karthik, I think we can uh, go ahead with the questions. Harshit, would you like to uh, ask the questions from the audience one by one? And then if we have time, we will take your remaining questions. Sure, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Uh, so, uh, first question is from Marushi. Uh, she asks, what is the scope uh, in pursuing law along with CS then going for civil services like UPSC or judiciary? I think this is for Vidhi, ma'am. So, uh, she can answer. So, the curriculum of CS is uh, a lot into corporate law, securities law, economic practices. Uh, that's where when you're doing law, it's, it goes, it, it can, it complements very well. Uh, also, uh, so if you want to get into corporate law or if you want to, you know, uh, even get into securities law, it is where I feel CS will help you to, uh, you, know, you know, like to, you know, uh, even like, you know, like to even uh, for a lot of people, you know, in the legal counsel division, it's basically that, you know, uh, these days, if the companies prefer that one person is aware of the, you know, the, the laws and also the company secretarial practice. So if you are that one person who's aware of both, if you can, you know, also advise on the legal fields and also know the company secretarial practice and the standards that they have, you are good to be, you know, uh, you know, you'll always be in demand. However, if you are interested in judiciary and UPSC, that, that preparation is different. So that can go side by side, but uh, uh, so UPSC and judiciary is, you know, I will not place them in the same category because judiciary is, you know, very law oriented and UPSC is, you know, probably anything under the sun can come. So uh, it depends, you know, that, that really depends on, uh, but definitely law does help if you're preparing for these two courses, uh, especially for judiciary, because uh, it will make your foundation, it will help you. However, uh, if you're sure if, that you want to get in corporate law, then CS and law is a very good combination. Uh, another question is again from Arushi, and she asks, what skill do we need to practically have or learn in order to come out the best in law field? So what field does the lawyer should have or a law student should have is uh, the question of Arushi. Uh. <laughs> I can't really list out the skills. There are skills you need for any job. I don't think you need to learn this. You need to be bothered about learning skills. Skill learning is something that you will eventually do on the job, like Viti had mentioned. What you need to be bothered about is, you know, uh, knowledge acquiring as much as you can through law school. Uh, it, to me, is not uh, a heavily skill-based course in terms of law school experience. It gets into skill when you get into particular areas of practice, say litigation or corporate law, where you have to do negotiations. So skills come in uh, on the job when you learn them. Uh, the idea of law school would be to you know, have a foundation where you have that substantive knowledge and rest can follow. Uh, another question is from Puneet. He asked, which is my ideal law school? But I think uh, it has already been answered by ma'am when she was telling how to choose a law school. So I think we can skip this. Another question is from Arju. Uh, uh, he or she, whoever, I do not know their gender, uh, asks how to choose the university if one is very sure for specialization course, which he wants to opt. So it is a bit different from how to choose a university generally. Uh, here, uh, he's sure about what kind of specialization he wants to pursue. So, uh, ma'am, is there any specific uh, specific thing he should do to uh, choose any university in such a case? Um, so, if you're going for a five-year course, no. Uh, they'll all uh, more or less teach you the same things. If you have a particular interest, you can choose more electives in that space. Uh, if you're going for a three-year course, there would be very few law schools in India which offer some form of specialization along with three-year course. So your choices anyways are limited. Uh, so uh, say if you are, want to opt for uh, practicing intellectual property, then you should look for a law school which offers some kind of specialization with LLB in IP or even with BA LLB if they do, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, five-year course more or less wouldn't vary so much in terms of specialization. Uh, again, uh, next question is again from Marju. Uh, is joining any law firm really a good option after completion of graduation or can be any other 
a better option except that you have two options in front of you i am in a law firm with he is in uh, with wwf so clearly two options are right here uh, aside from that there are several i mean you can be an independent practitioner uh, you can join a, a company in an in house role you can join an ngo you can join think tanks you can get into academics so i mean there is no one option it depends on your interests and your circumstances and what you want to choose and there is always flexibility in moving from one to the other uh, another question is from ansh he asked how to start preparation from class 11 i think uh, uh, i think ma'am uh, you can answer him how to prepare for the law school want to answer that with the i i don't think you can prepare for law school it will just hit you and you will uh, acclimatize to it I, i there's no preparation required the idea of law school is go and learn you don't need to have you know any sort of uh, pre prep to get into it and uh, no, i think uh, if i may interrupt i think what ansh is asking is that you know uh, he's in class 11th uh, i suppose and he's thinking of how to prepare for clat or lsat how should he go about it that's what he's asking not just law school but preparation so i mean i don't really know much about entrance exam preparation to be honest i did my entrance exam in a month's time i didn't really prepare i didn't really take coaching but i'm sure uh, there are a lot of places which offer clat coaching or lsat coaching uh, you can probably look into it in 12th as opposed to say giving a pmt or an engineering entrance exam for the reason that uh, law school entrance exams do not require to you to have knowledge per se so you don't have to learn any substantive subject matter it's more about testing your uh, uh, you know logical thinking and uh, critical thinking and your uh, uh, command over english at a baseline level so i think these are the things that really you don't really need uh, need to get very intensive at in your 11th standard probably early 12th you can start with it so that it is fresh because these are also subjects which uh, also are uh, you know a product of practice more than your uh, uh, intelligence or iq i'd say the more you practice logical thinking reasoning the better you get at it the better you get at solving questions uh, so i'd say give 11th enjoy 11th start at 12th uh, give it 6 months and it should be okay uh, if i may uh, i have i have given clat and i think uh, clat does not test you on your knowledge it tests uh, it tests you on your skills uh, reasoning skills and everything so see the syllabus of clat what all uh, what all it tests you upon uh you have plenty of time since you are willing to start from class 7 you can start uh, practicing the uh, uh the reasoning questions and uh, you can uh, enhance your english uh, grammar and everything else so just start by uh, start by analyzing the syllabus of clat and uh, you'll you'll uh, you'll get to know how to prepare for it uh great any other questions harshit in the uh, from the audience section no ma'am Uh, I see uh, one from Arju. Uh, she's saying, "Is joining law firms dependent on specialization courses? Uh, one is going to opt in any way?" So no, law firms do not require you to have a specialization. Uh, you can do it right after three year LLB or five year B LLB. It's on the job. Uh, that you need to uh, like i mentioned law firms you usually would have a at least year one would have a rotation policy where they'll put you in corporate practice for 6 months and then litigation for 6 months and then you can perhaps choose so and there is no requirement for uh, you to have any form of specialization or even an identified interest area at that time uh, okay uh, so i think um uh, as we are like you know uh, at the end of the session harshit and kartik any any other question that you have in mind that you want to ask regarding your cv because we are talking about future prospects uh, anything else before we let nimra and vidhi go <laughs> i have a question related to internship i remember i did my 
first internship and uh, uh, the tasks uh, which were you know given to me there are certain things which uh, which i did not know so i uh, kept on you know talking to my friends in other law schools and uh, so i asked them if it is normal to not uh if if it is normal to uh, not know how to do certain things will it make my internship experience bad or something like that so uh, uh and also i need some uh, i think we all need some tips on you know uh, how to uh, how to boost our cvs there are the, some say the mood codes are important some say uh, publishing uh, publishing a research papers is, is important so can you please give tips on that Uh, so no i mean it's okay if you don't know if you don't know and that event has happened that means it's normal it's okay i still don't know a lot of things and i do most of the time so not knowing it's okay uh, hopefully you'll uh, get good people who are working with you who you're reporting to will be able to guide you internship to my from my perspective is not about you going there and showing off your skills or impressing you know any employer internship for me it's just about you you understanding whether this place deserves me whether i like the culture of this place whether i like this practice so it's more of an assessment of the place you go to than uh, your own assessment and you should take it like that because internships are for you to explore various opportunities to understand how things work outside of law school and what's suitable for you um building a cv uh, I, i don't think you should make a very conscious effort of building a cv there is no such thing as a perfect cv you can have very bad grades uh, no internships or limited internships but you go at you know uh, one game of cricket interact with the right people your frequency is match and you can land an internship it's uh, it's a very uh, uh, social world the legal fraternity is a small fraternity uh, comparatively uh, most of th- the things happen on the basis of your interaction with people then on the basis of cv of course building a cv helps but again you don't need to do it consciously uh, if you spend 5 years exploring law school as much as you can uh in terms of moots debates you know participating in sports fests cultural fests automatically you will have a lot in your cv without you realizing it so you don't need to make a very conscious effort about it so i think what nimra is trying to say is that you know make the best of your law school and you know use your time well participate in moot courts participate in everything that you can and uh, also networking skill that's very very important uh vidhi do you have any additional points i just feel for cv that you know uh, whatever is mentioned there i think one should be very much aware of what's there there are times when we have come across long cvs and uh, you know probably the students are clueless about this or you you write what kind of work you did in a in an internship in point as and nothing is clear it's like you know i worked in this and this so i think whatever you write uh, about your internship experience or uh, any other you know law school experience it should come out very clearly and you should know you should only write any you know things in the cv if you're aware of it just don't fill it because you will be caught by prospective employers it's just don't fill it up for the sake of it i mean keep it very precise it shouldn't be very long uh, grammatically it should be correct it should be formatted it should not have you know a lot of personal details but you know keep it very professional keep it very crisp and clear you know uh that's a great point i think keeping your cv very concise and keeping it crisp i think that's the key uh so uh, i think there is just one more question and after that uh, we will just uh, wrap up the session uh, another question from uh, arju uh, he's asking why people generally go for law firms like what's the reason they don't go for independent practice so i mean uh there is no like i said there's no ultimate choice people go for law firm because they enjoy working in that environment if you i'll give you an example if i were to uh, do an independent practice after law school or even uh, you know 3 to 4 years working and then go independent i probably will not be explored 
to uh, you know good substantive matters as an independent practitioner i will not have the opportunity to work on uh, high stake uh, commercial disputes because as an independent practitioner it's unlikely that an mnc will come up to you and say that you know participate in this so i will lose out a lot in terms of you know experiencing that uh, aspect of legal practice uh, in a law firm uh, the disadvantage can again, again be that you know uh, as an independent practitioner i am exposed to more quantity of disputes uh, as opposed to working in a law firm so uh, in a law firm i'm missing out on the quantity uh, but uh, i i mean it's it's not about uh, but i mean you tend to find a balance there if you are happy with your job whether it's uh, being an independent practitioner or at a law firm it doesn't really matter it's a product of your circumstances your ability to work with others or whether you're better off doing things on your own uh, there is no one clear way of where you want to go sometimes a law firm can be much more lucrative than independent practice because you have an organized system where you are functioning and at the same time hopefully you have the liberty to function on your own on your own so uh, i mean it, you it, you can go either way depending upon where you are comfortable anything to add vidhi i'm never as a best person to handle <laughs> law firms I, i don't have experience with law firms Great, uh, Harshit and Karthik. I hope there are no more questions uh, for Nimra. And if you do, then please reach out to them. I think Vidhi has already shared her email address. So thank you, Vidhi, for that. And um, I like. I'm just so happy that we did this session. I think. amidst this uncertainty we got to know a lot about how to prepare for law school and then once you identify uh, your uh, university that caters to your interests uh, then how do you go about making your cv making the best out of your law school and then even the future prospects so uh, this was an enriching experience at least for me and i'm sure it has been for our audience members and also for harshit and karthik thank you so much vidhi and nimra for your time also harshit and karthik even though they are interning now i'm sure they have a lot of work but they have come here for this discussion thank you so much and uh, we look forward for such discussions in the future thank you so much thank you for having us thank you ma'am for sharing your insights